Hi, this is Quinlan. Today I'm taking you on a snowshoe hike to Akita Komagatake on February 28th on a beautiful blue sky day. And in this video, I may or may not fall a lot on my snowshoes. Hmm. Watch and find out. The starting point for this hike at Akita Komagatake is right on the edge of the parking lot of Elpa Komakusa. It's right here. That is where we're going. All right, I've just put on my snowshoes and my ankle gaiters, and I'm ready to head out to Akita Komagatake. I have gone to the summit many times before. In fact, I've made a couple of videos of the summit. You can see a couple up there in the uh, upper right-hand corner of the screen. But this is the first time I've ever attempted it in February, and it is a beautiful day. I think we're gonna have some great views. And there is our destination, the collection of five summits known as Akita Komogotake. We're heading for that one. You can see there on the left, which is Oname Dake. Let me mention that I tried to hike this about a month ago with some friends, but the conditions were terrible. It really wasn't a day for hiking. And so we struggled just to make it to the 8th Station Lodge. I posted a video of that little misadventure onto my Patreon. If that's something that uh, you're curious about watching, consider supporting me so you can see some of those little behind the scenes things and uh, more drone footage. It's like a snowshoe highway with how many snowshoe tracks there are going up here. What a busy day. Even on a clear day like this, the initial hour or so of the hike is just this rather unexciting uh, slog up what used to be a ski slope. It was one hour and about 2.5 kilometers up to the tree line. I'm not used to hiking on Sundays, and so the crowds are a new thing to me, but uh, yeah, that's fun too, a different experience. I can show you what the mountains are like on their most crowded day here in Tohoku. You can see the snow is a few meters deep, and we're crossing a road right here that zigzags up the mountain, as you can see by the mirror. We'll pass several. Here's another of those road mirrors. Hi. If you go off the trail, which I've done a number of times because I couldn't tell where the trail was, you end up getting stuck on these little creek holes and having to go down and up these steep areas, which happened to me when I was here and we were uh, not clear on the exact path up. Allow me to give you one tip about snowshoeing, and that is you snowshoe with stocks, right? You should not put your hands through the wrist straps of the stocks when you're snowshoeing. I actually learned that recently from a uh, winter mountain guide who was saying it can get caught in stuff, you can, you can trip. It's basically not a good idea. And you're not skiing, so you're not gonna lose them far behind. So you just hold on to the stocks and don't put your hands through the wrist straps. It was getting deeper and deeper. Can hardly even see the mirror here. Less than a kilometer now to the 8th Station Lodge and the weather is still just beautiful. There is the 8th Station Lodge. Clearly visible on this beautiful day. Nice and hard packed snow. I'm here at the 8th Station Lodge, as you can see, and it's about five kilometers. At a leisurely pace, it took two hours and 10 minutes to get up here. And it's really quick just to, we're just gonna zip around this ridge line to get to Onamedake, the main summit. You enter the 8th Station Lodge through the second floor door, which is right there. And now, of course, there's a clear path to it and it's easy to get in. But when I came here a month ago, I literally had to take the shovel in the doorway and shovel it clean. It's getting a bit windy. That's cute. Oh, 
Aren't you out here behind me? From here on out, it's just all perfect paradise. I'm walking out on the edge of this ledge and it's, uh, you know, a little steep, a little windy, but uh, it snowed yesterday here. And so it's easy for me to sink my snowshoe blades into the edge. And that well-skied summit there is Onamidake, our destination. And so here I am at the final summit. This is Onamedake behind me, which is the highest of the five summits in Akita Komagotake. And it looks like it's just another, I don't know, what'll take me, 15 minutes, 20 minutes to get up the top there. Off we go. Looks like these snowboarders ahead of me are walking up, riding down, walking up, riding down. It's like a free resort, huh? It's still a bit of a climb in snowshoes. It's harder than going up in the summertime in normal boots. I'll tell you that. There in between, perfectly framed, is Chokai-san. It's a little bit light. I hope the camera is picking this up. Perfectly framed. The tallest mountain north of Fukushima. My Chokai video is actually one of my favorite hikes, if you want to check that out. This down here is the pond, the Amida Ike, in the summer. You can see it here. After Three hours and 20 minutes, but that's included a lunch break and time to fly the drone. So maybe walking closer to two and a half hours, two hours, 40 minutes maybe. I've reached the summit of Onamedake. It's pretty windy up here. And so I'm the only one up here, despite how crowded it is. I guess people come up and slide right down. But take a look at this view. Lake Tazawako, the uh, deepest lake in Japan at 421-ish meters. Odake, Meidake. Mount Iwate-san looking glorious. In the comments, I noticed that a lot of people are interested in yokai or uh, Japanese uh, monsters, creatures. Um, ghosts, etc. And so I bought an academic text on yokai that I'm reading, and it's actually really interesting. So there's this term in Japanese, tsuiteru. And tsuiteru literally translates, you'd think, to something is sticking to you or is attached to you, um, like that, basically. But it also has the sense of meaning a type of possession. And I guess this belief goes back hundreds of years. This idea of a spirit, whether that's the ghost of someone or a deity, some sort of kami, Japanese god, uh, or a fox spirit. There's all sorts of different things that can be possessing you. And apparently there was a strong folk belief in this sort of possession throughout the Middle Ages. I mean, even going into the uh, sort of pre-war era. It, well, to be honest, some people still believe in it today. I'd heard that term and I know that people say if you go to a haunted area, you'll, you'll get like possessed, you'll have a spirit attached to you that you'll need to go to a shrine and have them sort of purify you. People had said to me not to go to certain places because you'll get possessed by something. In the Edo era, people would say that a family had this sort of fox spirit possession or some sort of animal spirit possession and that it was something that would go down for generations. Interesting thing is I guess in the book he's laying out this theory that there were traditional families that were living in villages and newcomers would come to the villages and sometimes with a lot of money and be more successful and uh, when they were when there was jealousy or um, they weren't treating the villagers fairly in terms of employment practices or wages or something, they would start rumors about these new families that they were possessed by a fox spirit and it would harm their reputation greatly. And it was a real problem and a discriminatory thing going on in uh, the Edo period, you know, a few hundred years, two, three, four hundred years ago. I love looking at Mount Iwate. This is not an angle I get to see that often. Looks great. If you want to support the channel, please think about uh, buying a t-shirt or a sweatshirt with the Go North logo on it. I'd appreciate it. 
If you like the video, please hit like and uh, leave a comment. Say hello. Tell me where you're watching from. At this point, I'm pretty much just going to zip back, sort of jog home. And so I will leave you here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the trails.